So let's talk about our reconciliation options. I'm going to go through these um, next slides a little quickly and then we're going to go into QBO so that you can see more of like how it all works and, and running around of stuff. But before I do that, let's talk about um, step back and let's talk about reconciliations and why we're doing reconciliations and why it's so important. Um, if you go back and think about the financial statement assertions that we talked about in the first chapter, um, we want to make sure that our accounts are complete and they're accurate, um, that we have everything in here, um, that everything is booked in the right area. So it's really important to um, do these reconciliations. They're a way to lock down the transactions for a month. Uh, once you do a reconciliation on a transaction, it is marked as reconciled. And if you try to change it, you're going to get an error message that you, you know, tried changing it and is this okay and stuff like that. Um, so it is kind of locking it down for you. Um, and so with the reconciliation, the concept is that our ending balance in QBO is going to match the ending balance of the bank account. Um, so we are verifying that those two systems match each other. Now, more often than not, the balances are different, right? For some reason or another. And it's our job through this reconciliation process to figure out why it's different. And if that difference is because of something that is inaccurate, or if it's because of something that um, is accurate and it's just a change that will happen over time. So an example of inaccurate is if we have duplicate transactions. Well, one cleared the bank, one didn't because it's a duplicate. That is an inaccurate um, transaction that we need to remove from the bank account. Um, so we're not overstating what is in the bank account or understating what is in there. Um, on the other side, maybe we wrote a check to someone within the current month that we're reconciling, but it hasn't cleared the bank yet. Um, that's really, really common, right? So with that, um, it's okay. It's an acceptable transaction to have within our bank reconciliation as something that hasn't cleared the bank yet, and hopefully it clears the next month when we do the reconciliation again uh, for that next month. So, but here, here is the reconciliation screen. Here's how we're accomplishing all of that. Uh, you can see the statement ending balance. So this is coming off of the bank statement. And then the cleared balance is what is in QBO. We want the difference of the two to be zero. Right, guys? We want it to be zero. So um, some things to note on these screens. We have the gear icon where you can adjust um, the table right here and um, I'll show you a little bit more of that in a second. Then we have options to filter things with payments, deposits, or all. Now here you can see the clear, um, clear date. This is something newer within QBO where uh, this is the date that came that uh, came from the bank feed itself. So the bank posted the information, it came through to the bank feed and we entered it. So it's the difference between when the transaction date is and when it actually cleared the bank, which is a nice little thing to be looking at, right? Um, and then we also have several more filter options on here and to be able to pinpoint stuff. Um, so let's take a look within QBO so we can move around a little bit better. Okay, so here we are on the reconciliation screen within my test company. Um, so this is the beginning where we put in our information. You already see right here, it's like, hold on, your account isn't ready to reconcile. Um, I beg to differ on this one. Um, this little error message that comes up, if there isn't a, different, a difference in your beginning balance or something like that, um, yes, you can use these tools to fix it. But let's just check and see what's going on within the area so that um, we can, uh, maybe we can fix it within the bank reconciliation screen. Maybe we don't need that extra tool in here. Um, so if we come into checking, okay, pick, pick my account, 
Yes, my beginning balance is off for some reason. It's a thousand dollars off. Uh, we put in our ending balance and our ending date. Guys, maybe I don't know my ending balance right now. I just want to check out what's going on. So I do this, start reconciling. Well, first of all, here's my thousand dollar difference. Okay. That's, you know, that's from a while ago. Great. I can take care of that. Um, that gets rid of, you know, fixes that balance. Um, but hey, look, this edit info screen, it lets me change this amount. So maybe I want it to be um, here. We'll just update it. Uh, and so you can change that. You can change the date and that information right here. So you, it's flexible. Don't freak out that you didn't get the right information when you started it. Uh, again, I have this, it's cleared in here. It's a high likelihood that, um, what you, when your beginning balance is off and you are in charge of the bookkeeping and everything, as long as you're in control of most of this process with the transactions, biggest likelihood is it's already sitting in here when the ba the beginning balance is off. You're just going to come in here and check it off and you'll fix it. Um, you don't have to go through that other screen to work on things. Um, so let's, let's look at some of these options. So I told you the gear icon. So we could come in here and I can get rid of reference number, um, pay, all this sort of stuff. I can change the density of these things. It's all to usability to try to make life easier for you when you are doing these reconciliations. Now, again, if you are in control of the bookkeeping process and you're doing the bank feeds, then this really, really bank rec should only take a couple of seconds because if you're using bank feeds, it's all cleared, it's already pre-checked off and you should be good to go, right? Um, but if not, then we need to, we need some help with the screen. So maybe I just want to look at deposits cause that's the first part of the bank statement. I just want to click off all of those first and then I can go into payments and I can click off of those because that's the way the bank statement's shown to us. Uh, I can go back to all, I can sort any of these, uh, whichever way I want to. Again, you have tons of options. Um, sometimes I just sort by number if I can't find something, cause that way I can get to the number faster, right? Um, then, you know, like I showed you before the cleared date, the date of the transaction versus the cleared date. So sometimes you might find something that, so like these transactions didn't clear. What if your dates are like two months apart? Well, maybe for a check, but if it's for an expense or something you brought in, then maybe it was not matched to the correct transaction. And maybe you really need to unmatch that, fix it, clean it up. And, um, you know, it'll work better going forward. Uh, then you know how the ending date happens. So in this example, 531, um, maybe, maybe QBO booked a transaction on 6-1, but it was really on the 531 statement you can get rid of that little X. So it automatically stops it for you at 531. And if I get rid of it, um, then I can see more transaction here in here. I can reset it, send it right on back to the 531 ending date. Here are all my filter options. Again, this is great when you're trying to find stuff to complete your bank rack. Um, but Majority of cases, if you're doing all the work, you, you shouldn't have to use all this stuff. Um, you can just look for certain bills, you know, anything that is a bill in here. Okay, I didn't have any. Um, let's see, I see credit card credit. Apply. Okay, I have one, right? So I have that. I can go down to specific amount. All of this stuff in here, guys, um, I can do. Now, if you aren't finding the transaction you need in here, it's possible that it's already been reconciled. And if it's been reconciled in a prior period or something like that, and it shouldn't be, then um, you can actually go into the bank register. So if I come into here, this is a little bonus information. You can see here, you can manually change this information. So like I just got rid of the R and I save it. 
I can come back in here. I can change it to a C, which just means cleared. It's not a hard reconcile. Uh, and again, when we have a C and we go in and we go for the reconciliation, it's already going to check off this transaction for us. And I can save it. Um, or I can come back in, in here, reconcile. Just a few things to note. Again, if it has an R on it, no matter the time period. So if I'm doing the May 31st bank reconciliation and this transaction is in August, I will not see this transaction in my bank recs, even if I say, show me all periods going forward. Just because it has an R, it is going to um, show up as reconciled and it's going to impact my ending balance in here. Um, so the, or my beginning balance in here. So one of the common issues that people have is when they set up a new account, uh, it pulls in the last 90 days or 60 days, whatever it is, but you have that beginning balance in there. And sometimes QBO just puts in an entry to opening balance equity for that beginning balance. It's like here, I'm just plugging it in for you. Well, they automatically put an R on it. So when you go in to reconcile for the first time, you have a beginning balance. And you're like, no, I've never reconciled this account. How can I have a beginning balance? This is not possible. Well, you want to go into the bank register and look for that R and get rid of it because that is throwing everything off for you. So if we go back into this reconciliation screen, resume reconciliation. Hey, I, you know, fix this. I can go through all of here. I can click everything. Um, maybe I need a, you know, maybe some of these transactions didn't clear in the month and really, um, I'm back going backwards into it. You know, maybe my ending balance should have been 75, 48, 35 on the, uh, bank account. I can come in here, change that. I'm showing you what you can do. Don't do this just because you don't have a bank statement. Make sure you get the bank statement and run off of that, please. Um, but then we also have these other options. So we can finish now, which will close it out. It will mark all of these transactions as R in the bank register. If there's a difference, we get the option to record a, um, a reconciliation adjustment. Another one, please don't do big reconciliation adjustments. I'm okay if it's a couple cents or a dollar, but if it's a lot, then that means you did something wrong and spend the time to fix it, please. Um, so we can finish now. I can save for later. So if I save for later, it's saved. It, it, all of the information I've done so far is in there. So I can resume the reconciliation. Everything that I had checked off before is now still checked off and we're, you know, I can just finish it out. If I do close without saving, it removes all of this information. It removes my, everything I put in um, for the ending balance, the date, everything I checked off. It gets rid of it all. So be extremely careful when you are closing this out, if you are not done, to do save for later. There are just a few instances when you want to do close without saving, So, but most of the time you want to save for later, okay?